Hello, my name is Samuel Paddock, and today I'll be talking to you about one of my favorite hobbies, Dungeons and Dragons, and I'll also be talking to you about how it improves ver my various skills by just playing it. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is what is Dungeons and Dragons? Um, Dungeons and Dragons is a role-playing game. Um, you take on a role, you pretend to be a knight or a wizard or something, and you play that. But it's like Maple Leaf when, from when you were a child, um, except unlike Maple Leaf, you actually have, like, rules to govern it, and the person who decides on the rules is called the Dungeon Master. And what he said, he's basically, he creates the entire world that you play in. Um, I got into Dungeons and Dragons mostly because I've seen it everywhere and I've been playing RPGs since I was fairly young. So it's more of a natural progression. But there's also a bit of a rebellious thing with how my dad doesn't really like it. The first skill I want to talk about is teamwork. D&D, um, &D, you play in groups of at least three he people, one dungeon master, and two people playing. So you have it forces you to work with other people. Um, while you do so, you play are, are having to solve problems with each other and not step on each other and give each other time to work out how things. You can't just be completely full of yourself. The game also. Um, had, had a lot of creative thinking as part of it. When you ha when you're a dungeon master, you have to create entire worlds for your players to play in, as well, well as think of cr creative solutions to get out of some of, them, of the problems that dungeon master creates. Um, the other, it's actually fascinating how some people just aren't creative in the slightest with it. Um, you also have to paint minis and create things for it if you like. Um, finally, it teaches patience, and this is from when I am a, have been a DM. I've had to deal, you have to deal with players doing ridiculous things, going off the beaten path, and just generally being absurd. One of the example of that was I had this one player who really didn't take it seriously. He wanted to create, basically be a fascist and enslave an entire goblin civilization. Me and that player eventually came to an agreement that I would let him have a goblin companion instead of an entire slave army.